AwesomeCon is a comic convention held in Washington, D.C. They claim to have between 60,000 and 70,000 attendees per year. Past reviews of this convention indicate that it's an extremely mixed bag for artists. Historically, it's recommended only for locals and flying in is discouraged. I decided to go anyway knowing all this because I don't necessarily think that money is always everything and sometimes we can gain things from an experience that is more valuable than straight cash and I was thinking like, how bad could it really be? The con starts on Friday at 1 p.m. and I flew in on Thursday. I stayed at the U Street Capsule Hostel, which is right next to the metro, which goes straight to the con center. It's also a five minute walk to Trader Joe's and a 10 minute walk to a Japanese convenience store. I think that entire area was very nice and capsule living was pretty cool and very affordable. This was my first solo convention, but since I heard it was slow, I wasn't too worried about it. This convention also functioned as a test to see if I could handle traveling and tabling alone. So that was my main goal for coming here. I'd never tested my solo setup before, and there were certain points where I really thought I was done for before the con even started. For example, I thought the table was too thick for my clamps, but it ended up being fine. Okay, we are all set up. Uh, it took a lot less time than I thought it would. And it appears that the Artist Alley badges exploded in transit. So they gave us these wrist things instead. I feel like that um, the security in this place really sucks. <laughs> I just walked in. Like usually at conventions, the security is really quite something. You have to wait in line, they check your ID. This place just walked in, which makes me a little bit nervous since there's so much, everyone has so much valuables around. They managed to place me next to one of my mutuals. <laughs> I think we get along really well, so this convention, it's not gonna be suffering. And the con has basically opened for an hour and it is looking like this. Wow, wonderful. I did expect it to be slow, but I did not expect it to be this slow. No sales have been made. I don't think either of my neighbors have made sales. I don't think anyone in this aisle, maybe the guy over there has made sales. People are at his table, but otherwise looking a little dead, y'all. I guess I'm just used to conventions where the aisles are just packed with people and there's people just lining up waves and waves and waves and crowds and huge crowds of people. Here it's like extremely slow and sparse, which again is expected, but I didn't expect it to be this bad. So I ended up making my first sale two hours in around 3 p.m. Now that's not great. Looking at the stats from my last convention at that time, two hours in, I had already made 33 sales by that point. I heard from the table across from me that the corner table next to them only made one sale in five hours. Now, they were selling anime titty art, so do with that information what you will. The highlight of Friday for me was when an older gentleman stopped by with three boys who were desperately looking for art of their favorite characters. And even though I wasn't advertising commissions, I did some in their sketchbooks. The Guardian was talking to me like, I don't know how many of these exhibitors are actual artists. So I was telling the boys, let's find a real artist to get these characters drawn by, which was very considerate, but that also raised some flags for me that this man could tell that perhaps some people tabling there were not quote, real artists. I ended up making 15 sales on Friday for a total of $323. Keep in mind, table was $375 and the mandatory insurance that they made us get was $50. So we have not made back table. Everyone was feeling a little bit more optimistic about Saturday. It seemed like from the Artist Alley chat that basically everyone had a very subpar Friday, but we were coping like, you know, weekdays are always bad, weekends are always better. Let's make bank on Saturday. Helen brought some cake for me in the morning. Thank you so much, Helen. This entire weekend was so much more enjoyable because you were my neighbor. All right, bit of a day two update it is 2 p.m. And I think I've made table back, which is good. These are all the sales I've made so far. So one, almost one page, which is just about where we ended up yesterday. 
There are a lot more crowds today, but the frequency of sales is still not that much. I'm starting to realize how powerful being in front of your target audience is. I think a lot of the people walking by just like don't even know what I'm drawing stuff of. <laughs> I don't think we will break even, which is a little sad. Especially since I kept my expenses as low as possible for an out-of-state con. I guess they were right. People who draw anime don't come to this convention. You will not do well. Saturday did see a lot more foot traffic than Friday, but it was still a little bit slow comparatively. I spent most of Saturday doodling in my sketchbook, chatting with Helen, and trying to stay conscious. <laughs> oh yeah, and there was also this guy. So yeah, that really helped keep me awake that whole time. Thank you so much, Awesome Con. The con day ended at 7 p.m. and I went to go get dinner and gelato with an old college friend. I ended up making 56 sales for a total of $632. We are still not broken even at this point. I took my sweet time getting to the convention center on Sunday, and it seems like a lot of other artists were feeling the same. I saw a lot of unopened booths on Sunday morning, even when I arrived late. And this is the hall floor after opening. As you can see, there is barely anyone there. It's pretty empty. Now, again, I'm used to going to conventions where there would be lines and lines, huge lines, in front of the artist alley doors before opening, and a huge rush of people as soon as the hall opens. So the fact that like there was basically no one there, no lines ever, you know, kind of tells you the state of things here. As soon as I got to my table though, I started making sales and most of my sales on Sunday actually came from other artists. And every time I met another artist, we were chatting like, how was it for you this weekend? And I'm pretty sure everyone, no matter what kind of stuff they were selling, was having kind of a very mid to bad weekend <laughs> with this convention. So any artists who stopped by and bought stuff from me, thank you for doing that. Even if you were in the red, I really appreciate it. On Sunday, I also met a bunch of you guys, people who watch my videos or follow me on Instagram. And that's always super cool. So if any of you ever see me at a convention, please come chat. Sunday ended at 5 p.m. and I started packing up around 4.30 cause there was only one elevator in this entire place and there was no way I was gonna wait an hour to get out of this place because I had made a reservation at a cat cafe in order to reward myself after whatever this weekend was. So off we go to the cat cafe, forgetting all of the trials and tribulations of Awesome Con. I made 40 sales on Sunday, totaling for $647. Sunday was my best day out of the three, which is very strange, but you know what? We take those. All right, it's been a few days since the convention, so let's recap everything that happened and my final thoughts on the entire situation. So on the screen, you can see my total expenses and my total income, and then somewhat of the things I'm gonna go through. My total expense was $1,336, and my total income was $1,600. So my profit was around $265. So yeah, objectively, this is the worst con I've ever done. <laughs> Um, previously to this, the worst one I'd done was Teco, which was my first convention ever in college. And I did that one around 2019, and the attendance back then was 11,000. I was table sharing back then, and I made around like $800, but I lived there for college, and so there wasn't very much of an expense. So I actually probably made more than this. I have to thank the mod of the Artist Alley International Discord for recommending the Capsule Hostel because that was very affordable. Uh, I stayed there four nights and it only cost $254 total. So I feel like a regular hotel, if that could have been like $200 per night. So that really helped keep the expenses down. And I honestly, I actually hit all of my goals for this trip. Um, everyone's goals obviously for each convention are different. 
I fully expected like going into this weekend that I was not gonna make money because I'd seen so many like horror stories on the discord I knew that it was a very big risk for me but I decided to go anyway because I my personal goal was to see if I could do solo tables uh, you know handle my suitcases alone fly alone set up alone run a whole show by myself and this was a rather like low risk show for that because if I had tried to do that at ex an extremely busy convention, um, that would have not been good. And at that time, I also really needed like just a um, just a break from sitting in this room for like months on end. So I really wanted to travel to a different city and just like touch grass a little bit, you know. And I also really needed a deadline to get things done by because when like you don't work for anyone, there's not really any deadlines to finish things by. So doing conventions is having a hard deadline to finish stuff. So for example, I finished the avatar print specifically for this convention and it did end up being my bestseller. So that was a good call. And I did finish a set of um, charms for this convention. Well, actually it was more for the next convention, Anime Boston, but essentially I just really needed like deadlines. So this was good for providing that. So yeah, obviously, as you can see from the footage, um, this convention claims to have 70,000 attendees. And I don't know where the 70,000 people were, but they were not in the artist alley. Like, I know what 70,000 people looks like. I mean, Fanime itself, like, Fanime was half that amount, like 30 to 40,000 people, and the halls are packed. So for this convention, I knew it was going to be a risk because among convention artists, you kind of know to avoid conventions like this because they are technically just like celebrity photo ops. It happens a lot at comic conventions where like the convention organizer will invite a lot of celebrities and the attendees who come are not there for the artists or anything like that, but they want to take pictures with the actors or celebrities who are attending. So for the attendees, they're already paying money to get in. They need to buy a badge. That's going to be like 60 to $80. And then they need to pay to take a photo with their favorite celebrity or get a signature. And that's like 100 or $200. And it's like, at that point, you're probably <laughs> not wanting to like spend that much money on the artist anymore. And a lot of artists did see huge, huge lines for the photo ops and signings for the ce celebs. Those lines were not there for the artist alley, so <laughs> there's that. And I also feel like 70,000 people, you start to become a menace to like the local population. Even with like less than that, it's like around the convention area, you will start to see lots and lots and lots of like people who are attending the convention, just like in swarms. But this one, every time I went to the convention center, it was like maybe, it's like no lines anywhere. Just very sparse crowds of people did not seem like more than like 10, maybe 15,000 people to me. Yeah, so Otakon is held in the same convention center. Otakon has about 42,000 attendees and is generally considered one of the most profitable conventions for artists who at least draw in my style, like anime fan stuff. So if you're claiming to have like double this amount of people and your convention hall is extremely slow and sparse like we saw it was last weekend i don't know what to say dude <laughs> like um someone's lying or the attendees just aren't in the artist alley another thing is that there are way 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 too many artists i counted the amount of artists listed on the website and it was 443. that's crazy look i didn't walk around the entire artist alley but there was one time where i tried to um go trade with a friend, and I was in row D, they were in row J, and I had to sprint for like, I had to jog for like 30 seconds in order to find them. This entire area is just way too big. Having so many artists and so little attendees, or maybe your traffic flow is just really bad, but like as soon as you get to the like middle or ends, edges of this, convention center where the artists are situated it's like there's basically no traffic flow it's just empty everywhere 443 is way too many for context otakon had 314 and katsukon which is 
Again, one of the most profitable conventions for artists have um, 175. So way too many artists for not that many attendees. And I hear, even though this convention claims to be juried, some years um, they let in people who are a little bit weird. Like someone said that one year they let a Tupperware vendor in. Guys, that's not an artist. And then this year again, um, that man who came to me saying that he thought that a lot of the exhibitors were AI artists. And then after the convention, a lot of artists in the chat said that the person next to them was selling AI art or they saw a bunch of AI artists around. Now this convention on their page for Artist Alley says that they prohibit AI art, but really how close are they regulating this? Can they tell? Will they deny the money from an AI artist if it's guaranteed? That's my question. <laughs> oh, and to provide more context, I think that my placement this year was pretty good. I was right in the middle, right where people are coming off the escalator and more towards the front. So I was like in the front center, sort of. So you would think that this is where most of the traffic was and that I would like have good return based on that, but I think the traffic in general was pretty bad just everywhere. And also, I don't necessarily think it was because I was selling anime stuff. I talked to a lot of people who are selling like, you know, more comic-y stuff, superheroes, DC stuff. Um, and I was watching, you know, the booths across from me who were selling uh, comics and Western stuff. And it seemed like everyone was kind of doing badly. However, there are a few artists who reported doing pretty decently and those artists tended to sell more craft stuff like plushies or ceramics or they obviously draw like more things that are catered to a western comic convention like taste for example i heard that Baldur's gate did really well and people who draw you know something more akin to DD style or uh like western cartoon style so if you make that sort of stuff you might do okay here um, no guarantees though. <laughs> Another thing that people brought up were was the convention date itself. So this time it was held in early March. Previous years it's been held like in later months like April, June and I think that helps the attendance a lot because March is very close to KatsuCon which is one of the biggest conventions in DC area and August is Otakon so this convention, when it falls too close to either of those, I think that the attendance suffers. Next year is going to be in April, so it's going to be later, so it might be better next year. But I'm not taking that risk, I'm never coming back to this convention. Okay, so let's go through some pros and cons. Um, pros. There's no line at the bathroom. Usually at conventions, there's always a huge line at the bathroom. There's always crowds against the wall, sitting around, blocking your path. You have to wait like five minutes to do a piss. Um, this one, empty stalls, no lines, no one there, so that's good. <laughs> also not good because, you know, now I realize that lines for a bathroom are actually a blessing because it means there's a lot of people there. Uh, then, pros, lots of time to chat with neighbors. I bonded with my neighbors because there was literally nothing else to do. <laughs> The Wi-Fi, the convention center had Wi-Fi and it was working for me the entire time. It was free, uh, my phone never disconnected, it just worked very well. Other people reported that it was very spotty and they kept having to refresh it and reconnect, but that never happened for me personally. So Wi-Fi, it worked. Again, probably because there's no one there. Usually the Wi-Fi goes down because there's so many people using it. <laughs> Um, that's the end of the pros. Oh, I think the artist Ally Head or the person managing it actually, um, she did a good job of letting us know, like, you know, the badges exploded. This is what we're gonna do. I mean, I think she did a good job managing stuff. I mean, I have no issues with the staff at this convention. It's just like the turnout was very odd considering what they proposed at the offer. <laughs> And then the cons, I feel like we've covered that pretty extensively, but obviously like no traffic, too many artists, attendees are not interested in buying stuff. So for artists, 
I think that you should try to go to conventions where the attendees are actually interested in buying things. Um, there were a few of them that I encountered that were like my, my target audience that were like my typical customers. But usually people were using the artist alley as just like a place to walk through, um, not even like looking or considering the art. And then uh, I have a section in my notes, it's just called weird. Uh, weird is security. Uh, I'm so used to having to go through like intense security, like Anime Expo, Anime NYC, like they have metal detectors, they search through your bags, um, sometimes they can get way too overbearing and obviously instances have happened where they take your food when that's just ridiculous. Um, but this place has very little security. The only security they have is just checking if you have a badge. So technically, if you wanted to do harm on this convention, you really could. I hope that this does not encourage anyone to do that, but like... I don't know how intense the security for the attendees are, but for the artist side, it's like nothing. So there's that. And then, I mean, someone did steal one of my postcards, which is fine. They they took Death the Kid, which is like pretty cool. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, that one's pretty good. Let's not focus on entirely the negatives here. I did encounter a lot of really good people and I did manage to make like $1,600 um, at this sort of convention. Which I consider a win, <laughs> question mark. Like if you really think about it, I just came to this convention with like a pile of paper and I walked away with $1,600. So thank you for paying me for my paper that I have drawn on. That's pretty cool. So my final conclusions is that, well, yeah, I'm not coming back to this convention, but it did serve the purposes I needed it to serve. It was a very interesting experience. I did meet a lot of people who I really like, but the convention itself was very mid. I think that a lot of things influenced this one, the date to false advertising, 70,000 attendees, come on guys. And me selling anime, Maybe if I sold Baldur's Gate instead, I could have made bank, but we didn't. I think that if you are thinking about coming here, uh, I would recommend that you would do that only if you sell more Western stuff or like more XD random stuff um, and that you keep your expenses extremely low. Like you only have to pay table and insurance. Oh yeah, next year they're also raising the table prices. So. I hope this was informative. In a few weeks, I'm going to Anime Boston and it will kind of, I, I assume, will be the opposite of this one. I'm tabling with a friend, staying with a friend. Anime Boston is well known for having attendees who go there for the art. So I'm looking forward to that. This was kind of just like a little interlude, <laughs> but now I have a bottom line. This is the worst, the lowest I'm willing to go. After Awesome Con, I will only do quality shows over quantity, is what I'm thinking. <laughs> okay, I'll see you guys in the next video.